If you're a fan of automotive history, then you know that in 1984, a seminal vehicle was introduced by the Chrysler Corporation, and that is the minivan. These minivans came in a number of forms, whether it was the Plymouth Voyager, the Dodge Caravan, the Chrysler Town & Country, or a number of other variations that were introduced in that model year. But the fact remains that these minivans just blew open a market segment that was completely untapped until the launch of these vehicles in 1984. The whole concept behind a minivan was to be able to provide customers with a vehicle that could fit in a standard-sized garage, carry a lot of people and cargo, have a low and flat loading floor, also have good noise, vibration, and harshness, similar to a car or NVH, and enable a number of different configurations for overall flexibility. Chrysler introduced this vehicle, not really by mistake, but a bit by happenstance, if you will, and that's because the creators of the minivan and the individuals who pushed for it were really individuals who were fired from Ford where they tried to push their minivan, the Minimax, uh, at Ford. Those individuals are Lee Iacocca and Hal Spurlick. Regardless, the Iacocca and Hal Spurlick obviously got their wish. The Chrysler minivan was launched and became a roaring success for many, many, many years. However, Chrysler wasn't the only one who was trying or at least thought of introducing a minivan at this time or even a few years earlier. In fact, GM was thinking of introducing a minivan earlier than Chrysler. In fact, for the 1980 model year as part of the launch of the X-Platform vehicles, the Chevrolet Citation, Pontiac Phoenix, Oldsmobile Omega, and Buick Skylark. Here is a picture of the design proposal for the minivan that would have been based on the X-Car platform. It was called the Nomad 2, as you can see there on the front door, and you can also see that it has a fair amount of X-Car heritage, if you will, associated with it, including that kind of chopped off front end, the very sheer looking sides, I would say almost Oldsmobile-esque wheel arches on here. And overall, really epitomizes that so-called sheer look design that General Motors was going for during that time period. Again, super clean body sides, completely uncluttered. But I think it's kind of an attractive minivan. You do note that on the driver's side here, there's only one driver's side door. There's not a separate rear door there on the driver's side. And it's unclear in this photo if there actually was a second door on the passenger side or not. It must have been a relatively short door because you can see that the rear wheelhouse was going to intrude upon that door pretty readily. So if there is one, again, it would have to be pretty short and doubtful that it was a sliding door configuration, probably just a regular door. I must say that I do enjoy that this minivan proposal has a number of items that were very popular in GM design at the time. Take a look at the wheels here. You notice these aren't the typical wire wheel covers. These are kind of almost BBS-like aluminum wheels with a larger center cap, and they look pretty attractive on this vehicle. And of course, because this is a design proposal, take a look at the size of the tires on here and how far outboard the tires are with respect to the body. The X car, as it was introduced, definitely didn't have tires that were this large or that far outboard. But of course, the designers here are cheating a little bit and trying to make this minivan look a little bit better. I wish there were more photos of the Chevrolet Nomad 2 proposal, but to my knowledge, this is the only one that I can find. And it's not clear what the designers were thinking for the interior, but presumably they were thinking of something along the lines of the Chevrolet Citation, as this vehicle would have had the same width, could have fit the same instrument panel, and of course, they'd be trying to save cost in introducing the minivan rather than introducing a bunch of new components. Also, interestingly, it appears that General Motors was not only evaluating that minivan, but also a potential pickup based on the X cars. Here, you can see a proposal for a front wheel drive pickup, if you can believe it. So, those wheels in the back are just dead wheels and dead weight. But clearly, this pickup is employing the Citation front end almost entirely the doors, the windshield, the A pillars, the hood, the grill, the fenders. And then from that door rearward has some custom sheet metal that I would say is not overly attractive. It's pretty obvious that this vehicle is employing the front part of a Citation. But, uh, you know, it may have worked. At this time period, people were looking for very fuel-efficient 
vehicles and having a front wheel drive pickup while could be against certainly the trends of the time and even the trends of today it might have been something that actually could have sold well if the price point was right of course gm would introduce its s10 pickup in 1982 a more conventional pickup that was front engine rear drive and that would be a vehicle that would go on to be a runaway success as well in any case, back to the Nomad 2 for a second here. What I find particularly interesting about the Nomad 2 is that General Motors obviously didn't end up producing it. Then Chrysler came out with their minivan in 1984. And GM actually ended up really introducing two vans that bracketed this X-car-based van and tried to capture the marketplace, one of which was the Chevrolet Astro and GMC Safari they were introduced for the 1985 model year, and both of which were based on the Chevrolet S10 pickup that I previously mentioned. As a consequence, they were quite rugged and durable, front engine, rear drive, not front wheel drive like this X-Car proposal was. And they did sell relatively well, and I think that they're overall handsome vans. Although one of the annoying things about the Astro and the Safari is the footwell space is extremely narrow. And one of the things that really precludes me from owning one, it actually drives me nuts. I think that the Aerostar was much better in that regard. But in any event, the other van that GM obviously introduced was for Chevrolet, the Lumina APV in the 1990 model year. A super, let's say, futuristic looking, some would call it Dustbuster-esque, but I think it's a cool looking van overall with an extremely steep raked windshield Almost Tesla Model X-ish, if you will, but many, many years before Tesla introduced their Model X. Huge windshield, huge side glass, including an enormous glass pane in front of the front door to provide great visibility. Of course, it was very hard to see the hood because it sloped downward at such a rapid pace. And Chevrolet would try to have a different philosophy from Chrysler when it came to these minivans, more specifically you could have individual seating in these APVs and you could take out each individual seat as opposed to a whole bench. And it allowed for a number of different configurations. And of course, GM put cup holders on the back of every single one of those seats. Now, the Lumina APV wasn't the only minivan that was introduced by GM. Obviously, there was the Pontiac Transport, later the Montana. For whatever reason, Pontiac changed the name. And of course, the Oldsmobile Silhouette. And yes, I'm pronouncing it the way that I want to. But GM could have introduced a minivan, obviously much sooner, back in the 1980 model year, and really beat Chrysler to market. But instead, it appears they believed that the minivan would have impinged upon profitable station wagon sales. And so they didn't want to give up those profitable station wagon sales and have buyers effectively trade down to a cheaper front-wheel drive minivan. And Maybe that wasn't the best decision, but that is what they decided. In any case, let me know what you feel about that Nomad 2 concept. Would you have bought one? Does it look good to you? What do you think? Put a comment in the comment section. And until next time, check out some other videos down here and take care.